Okay, so I'm uh, making this video to shamelessly promote my Undead Math channel. It's been right here the whole time. Essentially, you can notice in Skyrim, maybe, but more so in mods, that there are sometimes these stuff, these objects that translate to you, uh, I should say, they look at the player. So, like in Clockwork Castle, there were those skulls that rotated towards the player indefinitely, turning left to right. But nobody has really uh, messed with a rotating body that has its complete degrees of freedom. And so, so is essentially what we're going to do is we're going to make a script that uh, rotates an object towards the player in whatever direction the player it is. So, you know, kind of typical scripts would just move around like this. But we want to say the player is that X marker. We want to look down, actually look at the player. Oh, and I'm using uh, local translation. And actually look at the player using uh, all three axes. So I imagine you want to do something like put a, a mammoth skull or something that would actually look at the player in this way. I have this little arrow thing. Uh, now, before we get started, I want to uh, mention a couple things that are marginally relevant. So the first is as follows. You can see that this X marker is pointing towards the polar origin. But first of all, when I, uh, let's say that I move it this way a little, you can see it's negative. And actually, if I increase X, it goes down towards me. And that means that Y is actually this, this uh, from this topical view, it's the, uh, the would-be X axis and Cartesian coordinates. So actually, we're dealing with a different convention, a left-handed convention like this, because God hates, uh, Todd hates you. So that kind of jumbles up the math a little bit, but it's nothing really to worry about. Um, so what we're going to do is start off by adding a script, a new script. We're going to go here, add a new script. Okay, I have mine here. So. What we're going to do is we're going to start by saying we're going to uh, define event on load for this script and we're just going to register for single update by delay amount. Now that delay is going to be this uh, amount here that we define as a variable for the user to modify if they want. So every second as we have it here, every however many delay seconds, we're going to fire this on update event. What this does is after that amount of time, it fires, simple. Now you can just register for single update, uh, for pardon, register for update. And what that's gonna do is you have to unregister for it because it's going to periodically uh, call it. So those, that's mostly, uh, reserved for scripts that are semi-permanent that have to continuously check something over the whole period of the game. But if it's something that is really relegated to a functionality within a cell, not necessary. We're just going to use conditions to terminate. And then if those conditions are not satisfied, we continue updating manually. So what we're going to do is we're going to check if it's 3D loaded. If it is not, we're returning. Otherwise, we're going to continue to update because we can't uh, translate if it's not 3D loaded, it causes issues. What we're going to do next is we're going to uh, make a vector that points to the player from the origin of this object to which this script is attached. When we say X individually, that refers to the object to which the script is attached. And we'll make a Y and Z here. Normally, this would be uh, your typical vector, uh, direction vector 
Well, not technically, because I believe direction vectors are always unit. But anyway. Uh, but the point is, we're adding 128 units of offset on the Z component because actors have their origin set to the base, to their base, to essentially the ground on which they're walking. That means the object would only look at your feet, but you, we want it to, f to look at your face so it, it, it seems that, like it's actually looking at you. So that's what we want. In that case, we can't use get distance, so we're just going to manually get the magnitude. So, normally, you know, in just the generic case, we would have an issue with divide by zero error that we would want to check, but if this thing's gonna be in the air or not anywhere near the player anyway, and even if, if the player gets near it, it's so difficult to be exactly on the origin to, to, to where the distance is exactly zero. So it's just so unlikely that I'm gonna ignore it. Uh, so what we're gonna have is we're gonna help go ahead and make our unit vector. So now uh, what I'm gonna do is get a utility function here. So this utility function, I'm not gonna explain what it does. If you want to know what it does and what's going on here, uh, I have a link in the description to a video on my math channel that explains all that. So if you wanna know what's going on here and how these formulations are derived, you go there. Otherwise, we're gonna continue. We're gonna make a, a, a float array where we retrieve the angles. Done. And then finally, we're going to translate to what X, Y, Z, because we're staying still. We're just rotating in place. Then, then angle zero, uh, angles one, angles two. Now, another thing is this, you can get it link in the description to the full tutorial where you can copy paste this utility function. So it'll be ready for you to copy paste there. Um, and so these next two arguments, the first one is the speed at which it translates from point A to point B, it's not actually moving. So I believe it may be involved in the rotation itself, but if you want a smooth rotation and you want to, see it rotate over time, then you're gonna have to um, change this optional argument uh, and play around with it too. Um, I'm just gonna make it snap to me every time. So it always snaps towards me. Okay, done. And then save it. 